Greetings, the Astro 30 here yet again. Um, you're probably wondering what this is doing back up on the desk here. No, I'm not going to pull it apart. I'm interested to know how I'm going to mount this Elliott Sound Products uh, Project 101 into a rack case. Now, I was planning on putting it across the back panel, but I don't think I'm going to be able to. This here is the lip of the bottom lid. It overlaps onto the actual back panel here and that comes up 10 millimeters. So the rack case height is around 88 millimeters. So we're losing 20 millimeters top and bottom. Penis. Which means this said module, not that I've got anywhere to put it, that's come adrift now too. Not that I've got anywhere to put it, um, because there's not any room. It's not going to fit very well in there on the back panel, I don't think. So turning it around, here is the blank PCB. Actually, you know, it might clear everything. Just. Okay, so I've got the assembled module. Be cutting it close. Because I don't want those transistors to interfere with the lip. I'll put that over to the edge where I can see the edge of the transistor. Ah oh, yeah. It will just fit across the back panel where the transistors will be touching the top and bottom lid. Probably not good. Now a heat sink here. Yeah, it causes another issue. It just covers the screws to actually screw the top and bottom cover on, so that's not going to work too well either. Might go back to my fourth idea, or second idea. Yeah, I reckon that'll work a lot better. Is actually mount the heat sink sideways in the case. Um, I've got plenty of room. Yeah, sort of plenty of room here that I can actually have this heat sink because it'll be on one side of the case. And I was close to the back panel. I was thinking about running a rail across. Now I can't mount it flush to the back panel and put screws through because of those lips again. However, I can probably put spacers or washers or something to make it come out from the back panel so it clears that like 10 millimeter spaces away from the edge, like uh, non-threaded ones, and then you put a screw in, an M3 screw, at four points on the corner of the heatsink, and run two rails top and bottom at the front, and that should still leave me enough room here, at least a good 70 mil or so to uh, have an input circuit board. So what am I planning on doing with this module? Well I'm going to be building that four channel mixer amplifier using it. I thought uh, that would be probably a good idea for this but I was just trying to figure out how I was going to mount it hence why the case is on the desk and open. And I was taking one of the screws out of the lid it bounced off the desk, dropped on the floor but didn't actually drop on the floor. It landed itself in the bin under the desk. Amazing. Anyhow, now I've worked out how I'm going to mount it. Now I need to mount this to the heatsink because I might as well use it. I was given it for free. Now I was thinking of mounting the module towards the back of the case so it's out of the way. Um, now, if Rod's done his homework and designed this right, I should be able to go straight between the fins with the holes. So what I'll do is I'll grab the blank circuit board, I'll get rid of this case, and I'll mark out some holes for drilling. Now I'm pretty much eyeballing the position and distance. If it looks, you know, central to the heatsink and central to the fins, it probably is. Now, uh, 
Yeah, that's a problem. Those holes don't lie in between fins. Hmm. Right, the holes are drilled and tapped. That was harder on me, the drill, the drill bits and the tap. And as the holes don't line up, it came into contact with one of the fins. So the tap doesn't go all the way through. Plus, on the first hole, I broke my 2.5mm drill bit. Snapped it right off in the hole as it went through. Great. I was hoping 10mm screws would be long enough. They might just be long enough. Penis. Alright. I don't want these sill washers to move too much. Okay. Uh, that one just it's not these screws are not gonna be long enough. Wow. Okay. Try a 15mm there. It's better. So 10 mils are not going to work. Damn it. And I might be lucky that it, because of how deep this heat sink is, that it might just clear it. I believe that's the one that came in contact with the fin, but we're about to find out. Perfect. Ah, oh, that's bloody perfect. For an almost complete f up, that's perfect. That turned out nice. Yeah. Would have been nice though if a rod had probably spaced these a little bit closer together so it would actually go across the fins properly. Yeah, if you look at this, you can't really tell here, but this one, that one's in the center of the fin, that one's on the edge of the fin. And the, this other side will not line up properly. If you look down there in the heatsink, you can see just the end of the screw. It barely pokes out the end there, so it will fit on one of these heat sinks that I've got a 10mm thick mounting surface there with 15mm screws. Uh, so, yeah, but there's a lot of sloth and crap that came through. Uh, as I was doing the screw up, you can't see it on camera, but I can see it. It's right there. Oh yeah, you can see it right down there. Little bulb of crap. So I'm gonna have to clean the um, heat sink out. It smells like eggs or a fart in here. I'm not sure which. I did have eggs before. Right, I'm gonna clear the sloth out of the sloth. Why not keep calling it sloth? Swath. I've also realised I mounted the thing upside down. So, well, this will be a good opportunity to take it apart and um, clean the heatsink properly. I thought that, well, it was over here before, this side was a bit close to that edge. I thought I would like blade it out on the heatsink so I had some space at the back here. But uh, yeah, I screwed it on upside down. Anyway, I've cleaned it all up. I had to clean the sill pads anyway because a little bit of oil got on it. I was using RP7 to do the tapping with so I wasn't overheating the bit. And um, yeah, so imagine this is the front of the rack case here and that's the back. So if I bring this forward and I use this screwdriver to indicate roughly where the back panel would be, I think you get the idea. Now, The next thing to do is I want to test this at plus minus 35 volt, in, uh, as in how much power output does it produce. So um, it's already biased for plus minus 35 volt because I was playing with it on the speaker box yesterday without heat sinks. Now it's got a heat sink. I just want to know what the maximum power output before clipping is 
into an 8-ohm load. Um, thing with that is, depending on your supply voltage, I forgot to mention in the assembly video, R7 and R8 need to be calculated for that supply voltage. So if it was plus minus 42 volts, uh, it's uh, 42 divided by 10, which is 4.2, and then you take it up to the next um, common value. So in this case, 4.7. Uh, so if this was 332, uh, start again, plus minus 35 volts, that would be, well, 3.5. Take it up to the nearest value, which would be 3.9. Um, yeah, so those two resistors will have to change because the reason for that is 5 milliamps has to run through the uh, driver stage. Um, that's just how he's done it. I'm not sure why it's divided by 10, maybe because it's two resistors and 5 MA through each resistor, so 10. Um, it wasn't really explained in the article text very well as to what he meant or where the 10 came from. Oh, f that fart stunk. You didn't hear it, but it stunk. Um, yeah, where was I? Oh, yes, yeah, so I was talking about the uh, divide by 10. So, yeah, that's in the public website, so that information is available in the main project article, but he doesn't specify where the 10 comes from. But that's the calculation you've got to use. So the end result of that is um, R7 and R8, wherever they are in the circuit now, I don't remember, uh, need to be changed to, in this case, 3.9K from what the actual bill of material value said it's uh, supposed to be. But that's for the high power version. The first thing before I do any testing is we need to make sure that those transistors are isolated from the heatsink. Okay, so I've got a multimeter on continuity and it should be the source pin is the same as the metal um, mounting plate on the back of the transistor. Should be. Uh, that seems isolated. I mean, it doesn't hurt to check all pins just to make sure that you are indeed isolated from heatsink. There's no point checking between the two sources because it's going through resistors and you're going to get a beep on either side. That seems fine. That's obviously connected to the heatsink. See what I mean? If you go between source and source, because they uh, are connected physically together via resistors to the output, so it's a common source output. Um, it is going to give you a continuity bit, but it will be whatever the resistance value of those two resistors added together are, which is not very high. And God, that was annoying. So yes, everything is isolated. The supply is not shorted um, to ground or to the heatsink. Uh, ground is uh, over here. Nothing is shorted. Brilliant. I mean, it doesn't really matter, but yeah. So it's isolated. Everything's all good. That means that these uh, seal washers are still intact. They didn't tear or anything when it was being screwed, tightened down. So now we can uh, go on to actually testing the power output. Penis. Right, everything is uh, set up and turned on. Um, I've got an output signal. Now let's have a look at our maximum output peak to peak. Now we are in times 10, so we don't need to worry about calculating that value. Let's crank it up. There's clipping. Out of clipping, which is about there. I'm going to say it's very close to 60 volt peak to peak. Turn that down. These things not getting, even getting warm. There's my dummy load at the moment. Very good. Now, I did see it say around about 59.82. So we'll, we'll ballpark it, park it at that. Divide that by two. It gives us 29.91 peak. 29.91. Equals that 
divided by our load. Oh, 111 watts peak. Oh yeah, man. Now I didn't get the RMS value, so I'm going to get the RMS value now. There's clipping, bringing out a clipping. RMS is 24.2. Okay, so 24.2 multiplied by itself equals that divided by the load. Yeah, mother f 73 watts. I'm going to say 70 watts RMS. There you go. So what does this mean? Well, this means I'm probably, and you can get away with using a 160 VA transformer at this lower voltage. If you're going to use the plus minus 42 volts, uh, yeah, well, you can't get a 30 volt, zero 30 volt transformer in 160 VA anyway, not from Ultronics. Uh, you have to get a 300 VA. Anyhow, what am I going to do with this? Well, I am going to use it for that mixer project, yes. I'm planning on running on plus minus 35 volts. That's why I wanted to find out what the actual maximum output power was before clipping on that voltage. The only thing I do have to, to change, as I stressed before, is R7 and R8 to the correct values. Other than that, this amp's going to be bonza. So, I'm happy with the results. I was actually expecting quite a lot less. Because he does say at plus minus 42 volts, it only puts in 80 watts into the 8 ohm load. And we're getting, that I would assume that's RMS, and we're getting 80 watts at plus minus 35 volt which is not that far off of the plus minus 42 so yeah the figures add up so i'm quite happy with that there's not much more else i can say about this or do with it now because well it's mounted to a heat sink i can use it later on for testing other amplifiers or amplifiers speakers or something i do have to fix that sill pad it's gone crooked that's all right i'll do that after it's powered off which is now. Anyway, I'm going to close this video out. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please remember to comment, rate, and subscribe below. And you can always follow me on Facebook and become a Patreon member for as little as a dollar a month. I'd like some more Patreons, please, guys. Anyhow, this is Astro 3 saying see ya. Have a great day. I'm so f***ing happy. I will say before I go, having this at the back of the desk makes it so much easier. Alright, see ya.